Hello again, everybody. This is going to be Jund League number 15, making a good way on into the Jund journey. And uh, this is going to be an identical list to Jund Leagues, both 14 and 13. Um, it's felt pretty smooth. Um, both leagues prior earned us a 3-2. So I think it's got some promise. And also, all of the matches that we lost within those 3-2s were either our fault or we just got unlucky. So, I mean, they've, they've, they've been fairly good games for the most part. And I, I definitely think this, this deck has potential to 5-0. Uh, if not, at least continue uh, breaking even on the money I put in on it. So with that said, um, I'm going to pull up the current metagame as is tradition. Uh, Blitz in first, Uro Piles, be it Teamer or Soltai in at second, Etron at third. The main stairs, Gruel at fifth, Tron at seventh. And then we've got other aggro decks like Burn, Luris Aggro, and uh, if you consider Dredge a combo deck, we got that in there too. Soltai Control actually creeping in, so I guess they're... I, I guess they're uh, Categorizing this separately than the uh, the teamer version, although they have Sultai represented here, so maybe not. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and just get into the matches. Enough talking. If you wanted to um, hear more of my just my explanation as why I'm playing specific things or what I think about certain things, this league is identical to leagues number 14 and 13, and I've got loads of explanation and content in previous videos. So let's jump into a game. Snapcaster says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I, I just went over that. Yeah, I, I think. I think the losses uh, in the past ten matches I've played with this exact list. Uh, the four losses that we encountered, one of them was definitely due to an error that I made, and then the other three were kind of just like keeping a two lander and just like not hitting one in the top eight. Speaking of keeping low land hands, this hand's very good if we had a second land, but those are kind of like famous last words, right?" We can cast a lot of stuff. They mulliganed? Wow. All right, I'm, I'm going to take my first risk of the night and keep. I think uh, I, I think if they don't mulligan, like if they keep a 7, I think I definitely mulligan. Um, against the opponent who mulligan, hand disruption just gets so much better because they're already losing resources. And just like that, we play Tron. Um, <laughs> well, hopefully it's the Eldrazi variant. Yeah, true, Snapcaster. Alright, well, we hit a land. Not the best one, but it's the one that we can use. Please be a Leal Drowsy variant. It is! So you're telling me there's a chance. Alright, so we can, uh, we can Thought Seize the uh, Reality Smasher. Would love a green source at some point. Boom. Not a green source, but that one's good. We've got terminate for something too. That's good. They're just gonna counter it? Sure. That makes sense, because they, they want to defend Smasher. I mean we've got terminate for it. Ideally we just draw a land and we can uh, Liliana it. No, Thought Not Seer is pretty good for us. Come on, land. Come on, land. Come on, land. Land. Bang. Nope. Alright, well, we've got the Terminate. Terminate kill Smasher, at least. They missed a land, though? Alright, so it's both of us, at least. Land. Land. Bang. Nope. Alright, well we did keep a one lander. We were lucky enough to hit one. Oh, this is Mako 1-1 one, one, so they can cast a smasher off of it? Alright, now now they don't even have to cast a smasher off of it. Alright, I will I will terminate that. I guess I'll have to make the decision if they attack with Scion, but I mean they they're gonna. There's no reason to not to. Alright, so what am I discarding here? Discard a card. I, I always like say yes, discard a card, but the only option it gives you is no. Um, I think I want the Goyf and the Liliana. The Pulse is going to be good at some point. I guess I'll just discard a Bolt. I can use the push on the thing if I really want to. Would like to have the Scion dead before I get the Liliana down. 
Ideally, if, if I draw green land, I am almost definitely playing Tarmogoyf and going to push this thing so whatever, the, whatever they play next gets edicted. Greenland? Not the Greenland, but a Greenland. Um, I guess I should technically kill the Scion now because they may want they may want to use it for mana, and like this is kind of happening no matter what. So let me just not give them that option. I mean, it's their sixth mana. Maybe they're playing like Endbringer or something. Oh no, you've countered my fatal push. Whatever shall I do? Not loving the spot. Ooh, you drew Throt Knot. Well, I've got Pulse. So pretty glad I kept that. I imagine here goes Liliana. Because that can kill the Thought Knot and, and maintain some value. Yeah, so not at all surprised that Liliana eats the eats the Thought Knot here. Or Thought Knot eats the Liliana. I mean, the opponent is probably favored at this point. Just their their average draw is gonna be better than ours, I think. Yep, and as expected, there goes the Liliana. Not bad. That means we get to Blood Braid. Maybe we just Blood Braid now. I I like the idea of adding to the board. They've even got Tectonic Edge. I think what I do is I just play Goyf. So I mean, what would be the biggest punish as like a follow-up, right? So like if they draw Reality Smasher, maybe I want the Pulse to kill it, but then I'll be discarding a card. It's very likely that this Goyf will outsize a Reality Smasher. In fact, it will as soon as this Maelstrom Pulse hits the yard. So I could just Blood Braid now. If I play the land, they might, they, they might Tectonic Edge me. I mean, I really like the idea of advancing the board. Thought not, thought not must have been their draw, or maybe not because they smashed last turn. So I guess they could, in theory, have another thought not. In which case, I'm gonna want the blood braid in play. It, it's a tough one, but I think I'm gonna blood braid. The upside of hitting a way to kill this thought not is just insane. I'd like to get second green. Let's say yes. Spin the wheel. Like if this hits, if this if this hits like another goyf or a way to deal with the thought knot, we're just kind of ahead. All right, well that's not ideal, but that's okay. This also gives us the potential to double spell next turn, like if we draw land. I just don't want to see another thought knot here. Another thought knot here could be problematic. Uh, map completes the Tron. Tower surprise. Smash, smash. All right, well, our Goyf can outsize that. They're not attacking with a Thought Knot. I'm happy about that because I was I was feeling like I, I feel I was feeling like I kind of had the block. All right, let's draw untapped land here. Untapped land would be phenomenal. Nice. All right, so now. We get to Maelstrom Pulse, the Thought Knot Seer, draw another card, and then we can Thought Knot, which easily outsizes the Reality Smasher. Um, I guess I don't want to draw another land, so I can take a land out of the deck first. If I draw Ooze, I'm going to want lots of green, so I'll get Forest. Alright, so let's Pulse this. Did I target the right thing? Pulse, Thought Knot. Alright, that, that, that. All right, well, we drew another land anyway. Jam. Go. All right, that was a swing. I think we're ahead, but the opponent's got a few things that climb them right back in it. Like, if they can if they can find a scavenger, a scavenger grounds or tutor for it, make our Glyph an 0-1, then the Smasher could wreck our day. If they just draw lands that don't tutor, we could be in a good spot. Tech Edge? 
makes some sense. Although maybe they would have waited. Maybe they wanted to wait for us to activate that. Who knows? Old braid. All right, so. I think their uh, their average draw is still going to be better than ours, so I don't think I want to sit on my hands. I think I want to attack. Like, if they have this member, it'll be unfortunate, but I don't think I'm in a super good position to play around it. I gotta end this game before it goes much longer. Also, because like they could draw, they could just draw something like something like Karn the Great Creator and bury us. They'd have a uh, five mana to play something with the Karn, and then I guess like if they have Thought Not Seer, I'm gonna want to uh, revolt to the Fatal Push. If I draw a Spot Removal, I need something to discard, but I think the upside of being able to kill a, a Thought Not Seer might be too high. Well, map gets the scavenger grounds. Makes me happy that I attacked. They got blast zone? Drew another smasher? No, they're just charging it. Right, maybe they're not playing scavenger grounds in the main? Um, don't think there's a huge difference between 10 and 9. Like, if they draw another Reality Smasher, I can absorb two of it. Alright, so I guess I, I guess the case is I still want more green. Maybe that fetch was an error, because I, I, I know I had just mentioned wanting to uh, be able to revolt. I mean, they have to be wary with the Reality Smasher, even after shrinking the Goyf. Was this, this will hopefully put them to four, which means a Bloodbraid attack plus any burn spell uh, gets them dead. I mean, I could attack with Bloodbraid here too and make them take the five, but they've already got the answer to the, uh, the Tarmogoyf. And I don't want them just eating a Bloodbraid for free. This is good for me though. They have dismember. Oh, they do. Brutal. All right, now we could lose. All right, would have really loved a backup threat here, but obviously we don't get that luxury. Darn, darn, darn. All right, what you got? Tome? That's annoying. I can kill it with the uh, <clears throat> Abrupt Decay on end step. Right, I think this attack is good for me. My, my, my out is still um, some amount of burn. I mean, if I draw burn here, I can get in for three and just ping him. Hit a Karn. All right, burn please, or blood braid. Damn it. Um. Yeah, now I now I do just die, right? They can Karn for something ridiculous. I I, I I like have to absorb damage here. I can't revolt the fatal push because doing so means uh I'd be at three, and I can only absorb two of it. Yeah, I mean, but that was my window. Karn's Karn's gonna get like a worm coil or something. Can they even cast worm coil? Three, four, five, six, one left over. No, they can't cast it. Alright, it's gonna put a thingy up to Yeah, this works too, I guess.
Fatal Push does not touch a 5 mana play. Alright, so Eldrazi, Tron, Pillage, Plague Engineer. Those are kind of the only good ones. They play Walking Ballista. It's really good versus this. Kling isn't going to do a whole lot. What else? What else? What else? Maybe a Bolt? Possible like an Ashiok to stop like future maps from finding hate pieces for like Tarmoglyph and stuff. They could like maps get Blast Zone, maps get Scavenger Grounds, max maps complete Tron. It's possible Ashiok is just fine. Exiling the Yard just like doesn't matter at all though. Is there anything I would want it over? I don't think so. I mean Fatal Push isn't great, but I mean it kills Thought Knot, which is which isn't a very high bar. I think I'm just going to submit. Yeah. Please no relic. Not a good one. All right, well, no turn three Tron is something. Jeez, can't catch a break. I mean, I guess I'll sack Meyer again. Yep, I can buy it back with Kolagon's command. The sooner the better, too, because they've got Scavenger Grounds. Not a land, please. Okay. Well, I mean, my plan is already to buy buy back the uh, Goyf with the Kolagon's command, so I guess a one-mana play is just kind of fine. As long as it hits something. Oh, and it is. Wow. Jeez. So this is how much to activate? Two. I guess there's no way they're doing this um, on their turn. They're probably going to play like a Maze Mind Tome, in which case I can use the Kolagon's command to like shatter that and get back Goyf. So I'll just take Matter Reshaper. Kind of have to get Swamp here.
So the plan is, assuming they're going to play Maze Mind Tome, unless they just draw the land for the Smasher. Alright, there's the Tome. So now I get to kill that and get back Goyf. Well, lots of modes. Alright, return a creature, return a creature, kill an artifact. That one, that one. Another land, not great. So they can pop Scavenger Grounds, which means our Goyf would just get eaten. Yeah, I'll let them hit this. I've got a backup anyway. They didn't just want to play a Smasher there. Another Reshaper. I guess they can hold up uh, another thing if they do this. Come on, deck. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best way to do it. I mean, I, I could also uh, loop a peatland. They can't activate this yet. Maybe, maybe, maybe I find something better to do, but I doubt it. Yeah, another land. I mean, pulsing would definitely keep the pressure off. But they're just gonna, just gonna draw two more cards. It feels so bad to have to do this. This is this is just a clown show at this point. This feels so bad. Counter my sorcery, go for it. Yep. Go. I'm not attacking. Although maybe I should because I don't really have a block. But I mean if I leave this up, then they can't scavenge your grounds and smasher. So I guess I'm letting them kill this. Are they both going at it? No, they're smart. Oh no, they're both going at it. Alright, yeah, this happens. Good old fashioned second main phase reality smasher. Come on, deck. Come on. Another creature that doesn't do anything because they have a scavenger grounds in play. Pillage. A little late on that. I mean, pillage can take care of scavenger grounds and make sure that it does make sure that the glyph gets to stay large. So that's actually not a not a bad hit. Have I played a land yet? I have, I played the peatland. Sorry, I'm I just I'm paranoid I'm targeting the wrong land. This one. Alright. Glyph's the stone wall. Go. I mean I still don't like the spot. They can spatial contortion my Goyf to trade off with the reality smasher if they really feel like it. It's not great. Sooner or later I'm going to have to deal with these reshapers. Just that? I mean, I'll, I'll bite. If you want a two for one yourself on this facial contortion, that's okay. I'm going to do it afterwards. Alright, well, we know they still have facial contortion because they used the, wrong, the one with the wrong art.
Liliana's uh, decent. I can't do it all, right? No, I can run in six, get a land back. Uh, and then I guess play Goyf. So Spatial Contortion, conveniently enough, does not make Glaive small enough to die. I mean, somehow we're in this game. Still don't think we're ahead. I mean, that, that pillage on the scavenger guns was pretty big, because again, that would have made our glyphs laughable. Alright, well, blocking here saves the Renin 6, but hopefully they don't just like flip uh, Urza's mine off of it, because then we do just kind of lose. No Urza's mine, please. Karn? Oh well, that's going to be good at some point. Another reshaper, yep. Ooze is good. Ooze is good. Bolt is fine. Alright, alright. We're we're doing some stuff. Alright, so I think I want to just establish a normal land drop. I can, I can play like play Liliana, play Ooze, have a bolt available. Alright, so Liliana. And I'll leave up Raging Ravine so I can either bolt or activate Ooze. Gonna discard maybe a Spatial Contortion. Spatial Contortion does take care of the Ooze which is annoying. But I mean, if they use Spatial Contortion, they're not using the turn on a Karn. I'm gonna, if they play the Karn, I'm gonna try to surprise them by like Edicting and then bolting the other Reshaper, which will leave the avenue clear. Let's just discard the Karn, really. Alright, well, I'm still gonna play Ooze. I'll make them use the Contortion. We're in this game. Both at Ren. Alright, hopefully this doesn't like just get them drawing really good stuff. Uh, wastes that enters play. Temple that enters play. Alright, they've got a lot of mana. That's no longer their issue. Oof! Wow, hitting hitting Temple and another land was insane for them. Holy crap. Holy moly cow. Alright, well, I guess we're going with plan B. Somewhat crucially, this gets the ravine out of uh, spatial contortion range. Like I could have sacked Peatland now and like see if I hit a Goyf, but I know they've got contortion, so I think I want to uh, get it out of range. All right, this gets them the Tron. Uh, 
Uh, I think you, you're perceiving that this matchup is better than it is. My pillage was very timely, and they missed a bunch of land drops. Like, on turn 8, they had 3 lands in play. The only reason they, like, bursted out of the scene is because I killed a bunch of, uh, smashers. Or, sorry, uh, reshapers. Alright, so their one card is Spatial Contortion. I think this matchup is, is like a 45% win rate. But again, that's just like pure feel of it, my own experience. Alright, let's get in again. Go, 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 go. Smack. Um Do I have anything to fetch left? Um no fetchables here. We got Blood Crypt, Overgrown Tomb, Overgrown Tomb. I got Swamp and Stomping Ground left. I guess let's get the stomping run out of the deck. This ravine might go the distance. I mean, they also have access to stuff like Tectonic Edge. Blast Zone does not do it. Alright, so after activating Ravine, it'll be 4, 5, we'll have 2 mana remaining, so I think I want to sack this. Goyf is not bad, it's something to do after attacking with Ravine. And there's a backup Ravine. So Ravine's going on the distance is going the distance. I mean, I guess I'll play the Tarmogoyf and a backup Ravine. I'm gonna take up a blast zone once. They get spatial contortion. So yeah, so maybe maybe that maybe that was a mistake because I knew about a contortion. So yeah. Right? That's a different art. Blast the zone. The opponent still has lots of draws that we just cannot beat, though. Ugin is not one of them. Ugin the Ineffable is. Actually, we can beat Ugin the Ineffable. We can decay the token and then get in with Ravine. We can't. We can probably not beat a Karn the Great Creator. Holy crap, we won! All right. I'm at eight minutes. I've got time. Yeah, I th I think uh, we got pretty lucky that game, which which I mean, it, it didn't look like we were lucky because we got all we got all, we got all was dusted out of nowhere, but I mean the the opponent was pretty pretty unlucky to begin with. Wow, this hand, this hand's good. Um, I'm pretty sure I want to guarantee the pillage. Definitely want an Inquisition. Like I, I really don't know what's the bottom here. Maybe it's just second Goyf. It feels weird because Goyf is probably one of my better creatures. But I think I really want to guarantee this pillage on three. Bloodbraid's a really good draw. Yay, I don't have to worry about Veil of Summer. Take the thing I can take. Their hand's beefy. I mean, if I, if I can pillage him, map, 
temple. Yeah. This Goyf is going to go uncontested for at least a turn. This can get Stomping Ground. Say yes. Play Tarmogoyf. Go. Uh oh. Fuck. OBS crashed. Looks like uh, the OBS stream had crashed. We had 11 viewers and they're all gone. But it looks like it booted back up. And the recording's still going, but the actual stream is having an issue. Magic Online's working fine. Yeah, the uh, the uh, upload speed. I, I don't know if it's called upload speed. The uh, my my ability to uh, send connections to Twitch is not doing too hot right now. I guess they can get like Tormod script. I think we win here. We're getting a bridge. They can't cast it now though. Let me see if I can get the uh, stream situation fixed. All right. Give give people a chance to get back in here. It looked like I had seven for a second from the original eleven. All right, we got seven back. Alright, so sorry guys, I don't know why it stream the stream went went dead. Um just did it again. Come on. My internet's working fine.
Come on, come on, come on. Something is, something is up. Yeah, usually I stream at like 2,000 to 3,000 kilobits per second, and it keeps bouncing between like four and 800. Whoa, and I'm at 7,000. 2,000. This is weird. 1,700, 3,600, 2,700, 1,600, 3,600. It's it's it's, it's kind of normalizing around 3K. Hopefully it sticks there. 1830. Yeah, what's up, James? I, I don't know what's happening with the uh, the stream right now. It keeps skipping for you? Is my audio skipping or is it just the video? It looks like it's normalizing. Maybe not. Try, trying to give it a second so people can get back in. I mean, it, it's looking like it's it's coming back. My internet's fine. It's just the video? Okay, so you can hear me. I mean, I know you're here, and it says I have zero viewers right now, so I don't think that's updated yet. <laughs> but yeah, I was saying how... um. So I, when I'm streaming, it, it usually uh, it usually communicates at about between 2,000 and 3,000 kilobits per second, and uh, it, it like just disconnected, and it was it was bouncing between um, like like literally five kilobits per second and like 800, and right right now it's uh right now it's 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 hovering around 2,500, which is fairly normal. I've got five viewers now. Okay, so people are figuring it out, I guess. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what's up with that. The uh, the actual recording never disconnected. It was just it was just the communication to Twitch that failed. Strange. All right. Well, hopefully the people who uh, got disconnected at the same time come back because that's kind of upsetting. All right. Well, I guess while <laughs> while everyone's here, let's get into another one. So I'll recap you what happened. Um, we went turn one Inquisition took their dismember. We went turn two Tarmogoyf. And then on the turn we played Tarmu, if we drew a Bloodbraid Elf, uh, on turn three, I pillaged them, attacked with Goyf. Um, turn four, um, I drew another Bloodbraid, played Bloodbraid, the opponent played Karn the Great Creator, searched for an ensnaring bridge, but the turn before they could get the bridge down, we hit them down the negative one. So uh, we, we kind of curved out beautifully and got there. Hopefully we don't have uh, any more problems. Is, is it still skipping for you? I think my connection speed is uh, is is like just below what I what I'm normally at. But what I'm normally at is really good. Looks like it might be shadow. Goyf's a good one. Uh oh, now you're not communicating with me at all. I hope I hope you can hear me now too. I mean, the the recording's still working, so uh, if you can't hear me, you're gonna hear all of my antics later, trying to get you to hear me. Grix's a shadow. Ooh, they missed the land. That's big. 
All right, so I'm gonna want double black, and I'm gonna want to cast uh, Tarmer Whiff next turn off of, a off of a black leaf cliff. So this looks like an overgrown tomb. Cool. We've got black leaf for Liliana now. I mean, our hand's very good. Damn, they get to thought seize my Liliana. Bloodbraid's good too though. Hopefully they can't take that as well. Hopefully, hopefully we're getting back online. Inquisition's not bad. Let's just get the blood braid down. Don't want this getting thought seized. All right. Well, I expect this to get stubborn denial. It's like, what could they have kept? You know, if, if they're keeping a one lander. Yep. Pay one. No. So we've got stomping ground on the bottom. Uh, if anyone's in chat, can you let me know if you can hear this? My, my viewer count is going up to six, but the person who's usually talking is not talking and I've asked if he can hear me. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully he can hear me and he's just busy. Yeah, my con my connection's at about about two thousand kilobits a second. Chaos says you can hear me. Cool. All right. Can you see? Is it j is it jumpy at all, or uh, is it mostly good? I really don't know why everything flickered, because everything else in the, in the place is working fine. No, what? Uh, it, it's fine. Okay, cool. Hopefully, it stays cool. <clears throat> You can hear and see me? Okay, excellent. Alright, so, uh, alright, so, we're, we're, it looks like we're live again, hopefully. Whoa. Whew. That's a hand. Uh. Shit. Uh, I guess I take a dismember. It's like one of the things I can cast. I mean, they have the other dismember, but they really don't want to be taking four life to kill this thing. See, if I were the opponent, I probably would have mulliganed their hand. Like, sure, they have redraws, but their hand was missing too much. Like, they were missing threats and lands. Like, if you're missing one thing, I, I would assume it's, like, more understandable. But if you're missing more than one thing, I think it's just greed at that point. You're just expecting the 5-0 tonight? Well, just because you said we're going to 5-0, now we can't. You drew an angler? Uh, just redrawing again? Yep. Mill two more not lands. Wow, the opponent's kind of just getting the the rotten apple here. No pressure to no pressure to 5-0. That's good. Now that you've said that, you, you've taken all of the pressure off of me. All right, well, let's just kill the opponent. Had a fairly competitive game one here. All right, they scoop. They know about the bolt. Man, magic is uh is really really hard sometimes. I like brutality more versus the Grixis version. <laughs> Chaos says both teams played hard. <laughs> 
That's the that's the perfect way to describe that game. I really tried to kill them, and they really tried to find the land. Hey, if I'm not gonna play any lands, let's just pillage them, right? Uh, Clothis is really really awkward with like if they have a shadow and I like have to eat something. It could still just be good. Let's see what I want to take out. Take out the Bob on the on the draw for sure. Uh, they're playing lots of Snapcasters, so the Klings might be good. I like taking out Inquisition. Against Joan, I think I take out the Thoughtseize, but I think this player is probably actually playing Gurmagangler. And Thoughtseize takes that. Colgon's Queen doesn't really kill a lot. Bolt doesn't really do a whole lot either. Let's, let's take out as many Bolts as we can. This has us needing two. Maybe I just play two Brutality. Like, Brutality is a bad burn spell, but I, it can clear the way through a uh, Stubborn Denial. Don't know, don't know. I mean, maybe the Bob is just fine. I think it's better than 6th Hand Disruption Smell. Did I say Smell? Spell. With the P. Okay. I mean, their removal is, uh... Like destroy as opposed to uh, exile, so maybe, maybe the buy it back mode on this is good. It just it's not going to kill a lot is my concern. I mean, having them discard a card could be something. Maybe I just bring the Bob back in. Sure, I I, re I just really don't think I want the bolts. They don't kill anything. Like they pretty much their only purpose is like accepting a two for one to kill a creature or going to the face. Sounds good. It's kind of painful, but it's good. <laughs> it's all about Liliana anyway. Uh, Liliana is absurd in this matchup. The actual factual nuts. James says he just ordered new BBEs with the, the red background. This one? I'm going to be very, very honest with you. I'm quite colorblind. And I also don't remember what the art on the other ones look like. Blackly Cliffs is nice. Makes it slightly less painful. I think now we get stomping around with this because we have double black this way. <clears throat> i have to get some water soon. Please no angler. We've got the terminate for the angler. Oh boy. I mean if they fetch shock they could they could they could have the mana up for stubborn denial too, which should be pretty rough. Yeah. Not not this art. Got the angler. <laughs> but do you also have stubborn denial? I mean if you have the turn two angler, you like have to have the stubborn denial, right? Like if you're gonna have the nuts, you might as well have the full nuts. So I guess I should, uh, if I'm going to play around it, I should upkeep it. Just so I have, make them spend the mana on their turn. I'm not going to cast a run in six just for it to die immediately. So let's set an upkeep stop. I guess if they Thought Scour end of turn, I'm going to want to uh, respond. So I mean, yeah, this Terminate is uh, being good here. Please no stubby D. Got stub. Yep. Got stub. Uh. Oh, you posted the link to the art that you wanted. All right, I'll, I'll look at it um, after this game. That maybe the entire stream can appreciate some blood braid art together. Liliana. Liliana, who did they target with that? Ho! Oh, we drew it. Um, who did they target? I just want to know if they know about it. Targeting me. Wow, that's that's just the bad beat then, huh? Wow. Get him. As chaos predicted. It is all about Liliana. Liliana is bay.
<laughs> now they pray. Indeed. The Scions. Could be an angler. They need to tap out for it. Rude. All right, well, they get back angler, right? Yep. Damn, that would have been good. All right, well, we can just blood braid onto an empty board. That seems good. Alternative, alternatively, we could just get Goyf and uh, Renin Six down. I mean, Renin, uh, Planeswalkers are better the longer they're in play. After they delve all, we'll have uh, Planeswalker land instant in the yard. It's just a 3-4. I think I like the idea of just playing two things. The issue is if they thought sees me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's just as efficient to play two two mana plays and one four mana play, right? Right, Chaos? Like, if they thought sees me, I'm going to wish I had the Blood Braid. But I mean, I'm also going to wish I have the Goyf. I mean, Goy Goyf isn't going to be that big in the face of an Angler, right? Yeah, second run in six is kind of meh. But I, I like getting the first one going, especially because we've got Peatland in play. We've got the mana for it, right? Red, green. Oh, we have two green. Yeah, so green, red, Tarmogoyf. Yeah, so green, red. All right, and I guess if, if we're gonna fetch a basic, we're more likely to want basic forest as opposed to mountain, so I'll get verdant. Ooh, I heard a follow. You like this play, James? Uh, Col Colbedge? I don't know how to pronounce it. K-O-L-B-E-J, welcome. <laughs> Appreciate the follow. Got quite a crowd tonight. The good news is I think I won't be losing y'all again anytime soon because it looks like the uh, connectivity error went away. We're at a solid 2700 kilobits per second consistently. You haven't seen me online in a while? I've been streaming the past few days. Um, so I, I started actually recording all of these videos. This is a recording. Um, so my first like nine or ten videos, I wasn't streaming them, and then my girlfriend was like, you know, if you're gonna just like record Jun videos, you should just stream them at the same time and kill two birds with one stone. I was like, yeah, you're kind of right. So um, yeah, my my uh, my YouTube channel is just my name, uh, but it's also uh, um, trying to think is there, if there's a better way to search it. I think my name is the only way to do it. If you search Junderdome, I think that'll pop up too. Someone someone told me that they searched Junderdome on YouTube and I popped up. But yeah, this is this is league number fifteen, but it's the sixteenth uh, video because uh, I played I played Reduke's uh, Jun Shadow List for for a round or two. Well, that was a good draw. We can sacrifice the peatlands and then get the peatland back and then use the peatland to kill the Grimag Angler. That seems okay. <laughs> Chaos says, don't get me there. Don't get you there on what? Uh, yeah, I think I like sacking peatland and then getting that back and then... I mean, I also like just like getting lands into play. Yeah, I think I'll wait to turn on looping peatland. On YouTube? <laughs> Why are you gonna get sucked into a bunch of Dun Leagues? Hmm. I'll just go ahead and get Basic Swamp now. So I don't, so I don't have to like fetch shock for a Black Source if I want to cling to dust. I'm getting Forest, sorry. Can still get my value off of this and now I may want to get actually it's still verdant right 
Yeah, I can't get Forest Severance is better. I could still get Mountain. Oh, Junder Dome didn't help you find my channel. Um, so, I mean, you can just look up my name. It's M-A-R-T-Y, Marty, space, and then Silverberg. Silver like the metal, and then Berg like Iceberg. That, that might do it. You could also just search um, Jund League number and then like 1 through 15. Or it might be Modern Jund League number. And then I, I don't know how many videos could possibly be named that. You know? Oh, you got it? Sweet. Yeah, I should probably make it easier to find. No! Okay, I guess there goes Bloodbraid. And so th this this play kind of worked out in that they don't get to see the card I'm drawing off of the peatland. Thought C is not excellent. Yeah, I'll have to include a link on the Twitch at some point. Not a bad idea. Um, Bloodbraid was excellent, obviously. I can even Thought Seize them too. But I mean, if this if this Bloodbraid hits something like a Thought Seize, um, I'll know if I want to Thought Seize them again. Ooh, Plague Engineer. Not bad. Uh, I guess we'll just name... Shadow is an avatar, right? Pretty sure it's an avatar. Let me double check that real fast. Deaths. Where is it? Deaths. Shadow. Yeah, Death Shadow is an avatar. It is an avatar. Thank you for confirming. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I looked it up first. Or at least I, I looked it up and uh, didn't see your message by the time I saw it. But yeah, you're right. I should, I should link it on my Twitch. On YouTube, I have the link to the Twitch, but not vice versa. Wow. Alright, let's take an angler. Leave you with a push. Um, I could just go at them. Honestly, this planeswalker is so high. I think I'll just go at them. Like, their ultimate worries me, but I can attack it once more. Like, as it stands, like, I'm putting them to two, and then two red and six pings kills them. Not even gonna. Okay, yeah, they should do that. Sick! 2 0. Alright, James said we had the 5 0, so we have to 5 0. No pressure. Looks like the league number 14, which I started the upload at, is in processing, so that's good. It'll be up soon.
And we want a die roll. And we got a keeper. Black, white, Eldrazi, and taxes. Well, I guess I'm taking Vile. They can bolt their giver. I think I'm just going to play Tarmogoyf before the giver, though. Yeah. And <laughs> they just, like, don't have another land anyway. Yeah, I mean, taking that Vile is pretty big. Let's get the Goyfopotamus down. I mean, they could go a second temple into uh, Thought Knot, which would be problematic, but uh, I can kill Thought Knot no matter what. Oh, we got another vial. How lucky. <laughs> James says, well, uh, trophies are just expected of me. I feel like it's a little, that's a little, a little too much pressure, you know? All right, so let's get basic swamp and Liliana. Boom. Bang. Fire power. No bail off on time. Um, should probably just discard the land. Like the land enables our revolt for the fatal push, but I mean, there's plenty of stuff to kill. I mean, also we don't really need revolt if they do something like Thought Knox. We just like have the Liliana in play. <laughs> Opponent says, "Ow, oh, haven't played against Hand Hate all night." Should I say welcome to the Junda Dome? <laughs> All right, let's let's smork. S M Ork. Rar. <laughs> Chaos says yes. Do it. Gotta get that value in when I can, right? Alright, so now they can violin things on one, which seems fine with me. I mean, I guess I'll just keep eating the hand. At this point, I think I'm gonna just pitch the fatal push. There goes the sword. Oh, they also discarded Thalia. I didn't know about the Thalia, though. Goyf gets a little larger. <laughs> James says, well, though you've gained 15 leagues worth of experience, you should be able to trophy by now. It doesn't work that way, James. I wish it did. Show me the giver. Oh, I forgot to get water. I guess we'll do that between games. Yeah, you can untap with that. It doesn't protect itself. So this is the one where taking a card and exiling a card are two different abilities. It's not like, uh... What's the stupid thing called? Uh, kite sail freebooter? So like, if I kill this thing with a take a card trigger on the stack, I'll just never get the thing back. Alright, well now we get the thought knot. All right, so let's bolt this in response, because then otherwise they can protect it versus the terminate. Hmm. 
Please be a land. Damn. All right. Well, you get to take you get to take the Liliana. This Tarmogoyf is chonky. Oh, that's true. You didn't say that's how it works. You just said that's how it's expected. All right. Well, I was I was gonna say I'm in, kind of in trouble to a path to exile, but the opponent doesn't even have white mana, so that's two draw steps that have to go well. I expect them to want to keep the Skuller because they might want to attack the Liliana, but that's not doesn't seem like a very winning game for them. If they're attacking the Liliana and not defending versus my five six. Wow, I'm gonna be up for I'm gonna be up for a while. It's only a measly two oh six in the morning. <laughs> they discard a path. Sure enough. Alright, so I doubt they want to flash in a Skuller to block. I guess that's what they're doing now. Here's my hand. Alright, yeah, they just want to uh, attack Liliana, I guess. Yep, Liliana cannot ultimate. Which, honestly, not the biggest deal. Or I guess now they're going to flicker. I mean, I think I should just get the card out of my hand before they have the option to. I mean, they could, like, start flickering my goy if that's not nothing. So in theory, they may be able to flicker two things to get the the Liliana down, but then they just die to my onboard. Flicker this, fog them. Yep. Ah yes, they they rearranged my creatures. How rude. Be impressive if I lost from here, but I am ahead. <laughs> okay, because they want to kill the Liliana. I guess like they could have Blade Splicer. Blade Splicer would be brutal. Alright, the third Liliana is enough. They just conceded. Alright, so Eldrazi and Taxes. Interesting. Plague Engineer seems like it's going to be good because they've got like Thalias and all those other human shenanigans. Like I name Elementals if I want to take care of a Flicker Wisp. I think I like Brutality just because it kills something. Can clear the way for a, Can clear the way of a Path to Exile if I want. Don't think anything else is particularly attractive. We did see lots of uh, swords. But they're probably playing the stone blade package. I mean, we've got lots of answers to uh, all the equipment, but like they're also playing Aether Vial, which is like a mana generator. Could be good enough. Um, I think I'm taking out Thoughtseize, especially while I'm on the draw. On the, on the play, I think it's worth it to bring it in so I can, like, nab the vials, but if they've got the vial on one, they're going to be able to play it no matter what. Uh, Cling the Dust doesn't seem to have much of a use versus them, other than it's a redraw. It's a lot of threes. Well, not really. Um, Goyf is pretty big. 
It's possible scavenging ooze just isn't good enough. I mean, gaining life could be a thing. It also gets quite large. Them playing the uh, displacer makes it much worse because it doesn't come back with the counters on it. I think on the draw, Shave of Liliana could be really bad versus Thalia. These pillages might be ambitious, but I'm willing to give them a shot. I need to cut two. One. I think I want to keep three of them. It's nice for clearing a path. By clearing a path, I mean like for a path to exile. Clear a path from the path. I think on the play, I'm going to want these Liliana's back. Oh crap, water. I gotta get water. Ooh, this sounds good. Keep. They mulliganed? Mulligan into no one drop. Okay. You think I'm better with targeted removal, James? Yeah, targeted removal is going to be uh, pretty pretty big versus them. Alright, so let's play the Mire so I have the option of bolting. If I didn't draw... If I didn't draw an untapped red or green, I think I would have played Ravine. Because then I, I want to play Renin 6 on 2 if I can. Oh, you're saying you think you like targeted removal better than Pillage? Yeah, completely fair. I mean, but if I can make room for both, maybe both are okay. Like, I'm, I'm just going to have to, like, prioritize hitting, um, like, uh, artifacts with the pillages. Oh boy, let's fetch in response. Not making that mistake. Alright, so let's get stomping ground for the lightning bolt. Say yes. Luckily, I didn't yield until end step, right? Double tap land's kind of awkward. They are doing that. Batter skull makes sense. Hey, there's pillage. Pillage can kill the batter skull. The removal is going to be Path to Exile, so I'd like to avoid getting basics, but my mana is kind of, uh, kind of stinky in terms of pain. Like, if I'm going to want to pillage a Batter Skull, that's kind of rude. I mean, I don't really have a better place, so maybe I should just pulse the Stoneforge and be done with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'll get basic, I'll get basic Mountain here. Pulse this thing. Get it back. Yeah, they're they're like off batter skull for a while. Dot not, yeah, that's rude. My hand's not great.
Tarmogoyf is decent. We don't actually have land in the yard. So I think what I'll do is I'll just take this moment to put a ravine into play. Oh no, I have to play the Bloodstained Mire so I can sack it and uh, threaten having a Alright, well, unfortunately, we already used our uh, Maelstrom Pulse. There goes our Plague Engineer. Alright, they saw the line. You know, we might ultimate, though. Then we can Maelstrom Pulse again. Non zero chance that happens. Like they may, they may be forced to suicide a thought knot to make sure the run in six doesn't just ultimate and cast the maelstrom pulse again. So now I can I could plus get back the bloodstained mire, play raging ravine. If, if this is pretty bad for me, if they have path to exile, so maybe I should make sure the way is clear for that. Like this, this could very easily brick, but I don't think that's super tragic. All right, it does. I have another thought knot. Oh, they can flicker wisp my Tarmogoyf, kill my Ren and Six that way. Brutal. In that case, so I just want to get my value now, draw a card. But then they could thought knot. I mean, if they thought knot though. They're, they're suiciding one to kill the Renin Six. So I, I think I should just get my value now. Like this obviously tells them I have nothing. Jeez. Get back Peatland. Alright, that, that was a bad break. So now, now I assume they're going to Flicker Wisp my Tarmogoyf. They'll just get my Ren and Six dead. Yep, yep, yep. So this opens up another avenue, which is what happens if I attack with Ravine and Tarmogoyf? That's for nine. That means any creature getting through next turn plus the bolt kills them. Except they might batter skull. Oh they actually can't batter skull. Is that is that too risky of a line? So like if we attack for tar with Tarmogoyf and the Ravine. They can hit us for uh, 11 on the backswing. That puts us at 2. But what if they attack with like just one Thought Knot, right? Like one Thought Knot and Flicker Wisp. That would put us to 6. They have to block with their Thought Knot. We could bolt the Flicker Wisp. That still puts us to 2 and then we kill them. It may be crazy to just go for the kill in 2 turns, but I think we should. Like their hand is better than ours. We are not winning a long game. Like, our hand is four lands and a bolt. Let's do it. Double check my math. Yeah, they have 11 and they have 8, 9, 10, 11 in play. Let's just jam into them. Nine is a hefty chunk.
<laughs> Either one of my attackers is lethal. They have to block both. Like, they could thought not here again. So their, their best play is probably like Thought Not Seer me, attack me with one Thought Not Seer, they, then they can block block, but then they're not putting me within range. Yeah, this is hard. I mean, so now they have to Thought Not. They're playing Giver? That doesn't do it. I don't know the rest of their hand. Oh, it's Arbiter. They just die. No, they don't die. Another land. So if I go Swamp, Activate Ravine, they have to block, block. I can bolt the other thing. Yeah, I mean, I guess the fail rate to this was they drew two creatures that I didn't know about. Um... I mean, I have to, if, if I untap, I, I have to, if, if I let them untap, I have to kill the giver before anything else, because it'll just protect stuff. So I guess I could, like, now bolt a flicker wisp. Yeah, I could, like, I could just bolt a flicker wisp. And then I'll have Tarmogoyf and Ravine to block two Thought Knots. It's not great. I mean, their scholar isn't gonna find anything. Yeah, let me let me recheck the math. So I can bolt something, attack with the ravine and the goy. If they go block, block, and then I just die to the thought knots. Yeah, I have to kill the flicker wisp, and then just stay on blocking duty. Can I attack with Goyf? And then just block with the Ravine? No, I die. Oh wait, I'm stupid. They can just get protection on blocks, right? That's how that works. I'm so dumb! Oh my god, I just bolt them! Wow! Classic mistake. Holy crap, I'm so stupid. Holy crap, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid, I'm so stupid. Oh my god, how do I miss that? How did I miss that? Wow, that's so bad. I apologize. Wow, that's upsetting. Not gonna lie. Oh my god. That that was bad. That was really, really bad. Wow. I, I deserve that. Did you path two? Purge? Okay. Yeah, now I lose. Yeah, I deserve that. Wow, that was really bad. Really, 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 really bad. Crap. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to message the the opponent in chat. Like, I realize I'm an idiot now. That was so atrociously bad. I think on the play, I kind of want this stuff back. Maybe Thoughtseize is still bad. I think I think the other acquisition's probably good. Crap, 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 crap. Yeah. James, I wish you had said something like 10 seconds earlier. Crap. Oh, I'm going to be kicking myself for the rest of the night for that. Oh, yeah.
Damn it. I haven't made that mistake in like two years. Just like forget the fact that Bolt goes to face. R.I.P. Rest in pepperoni. <laughs> I was wondering when you notice. Yeah, I just didn't see it. Oh, there's a delay in chat. I think the delay is only about four or five seconds. Well, the opponent mulligans. So let's hope this Inquisition really punishes them. All right, but we're not dead yet, right? Like, I gotta shake it off. Like, we're, we're not dead yet. We're still in this. Uh, second Arbiter is pretty annoying, but so is Thalia. I mean, Tarmoglyph is gonna outsize pretty much everything. They can turn to a Displacer with the Eldrazi Temple, but I still think Thalia is slightly more annoying. Arbiters don't do a whole lot. I can just make sure to use my fetch lands first. So I, I think I should just take either Thalia or the Displacer. Displacer has the potential of doing a lot more harm, so I'll take that. Yeah, we're not out, we're not out of it yet, but I need to get my head back on. So the opponent goes temple pass. Okie dokie, okie dokie. Fatal push isn't bad. Alright, so let's get blood crypt. Tarmogoyf. Go. Oh my god, that's gonna be a stain on my record. Oof, oof, oof. Oh my god, I can't believe I missed it. Wow, I'm like really upset. They didn't do anything? They must have path and they just really want a path. Yeah, like this, this has to be path to exile here. Not a land, please. Yeah, this is a path. That's a land. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to worry about it, but... Like, if that's the reason that we don't... Like, you know, do super well this league, I'll be kind of upset. It's chill, it's chill. Please don't have a thought not. Mm. That one hurts my heart. Alright, what is this? Zathalia or Arbiter? Sword? That's fine. As soon as they spend mana trying to equip that thing, that's when I'll... Alright, 
We need like a, uh, not another bolt. If they play Thought Knot, I'm probably gonna wanna double bolt it. Yeah, I'm breathing, I'm breathing. I won't even blame that on the exhaustion of it being 2.30 in the morning. I just need to not be so stupid. Okay. I'm not even going to bolt that now. I'm, I'm going to wait until they spend mana equipping a sword. Or I draw Renin 6. Ren and six kills that pretty pretty dandily. <laughs> you were only joking about the pressure? Well gee, now's a good time to bring that up. I know, I know, I know you're just joking. Alright, so I still think uh, I'm gonna want to double vote a thought knot, but they'd have to draw it now. And if they if they do hit the thought knot, I can still kill it with a Ren and Six and one of the bolts, so I think I'll just save the life here. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're doing. It's okay. I understand. It's it's my own fault. I mean, I guess this doesn't matter a whole lot. The, the taxing is annoying. I'll just get basic mountain. Yep. That resolves. And again, I don't think I'm going to bolt anything until they spend mana on the sword to try to equip it. Although, it does get more awkward with the this in play, because they may want to just attack that anyway. I think it's still probably right to wait. Goif? Ooh, Bloodbird's good. Bloodbird's good. Liliana of the Veil. Liliana of the Veil. Okay. You. Alright, what lands do we even have left in the deck? It's only Basic Swamp. Yeah, I think the opponent's play of Sword on Fire Nice is a little strange, because they didn't have anything to equip onto it yet. Like, I would think they'd want to wait until... Like, like wait, wait, wait until um, they can immediately equip it to something. <laughs> so is John with good top decks? GG's. Are they, are they just scooping it? I, I don't understand. I don't think they're dead yet. We're very ahead. Holy crap, we did it. Alright, so despite some mild to deranged stupidity, I, I, I escaped with it. And like you saw me too, like I was I was doing my best to check for lethal, like with my various attacks, but I just like didn't once check for lethal with just like the lightning bolt in my hand. Yeah, yeah. I I, I know I can win. I just gotta get over myself. <laughs> Whew. I am excited to go to sleep. I slept a lot today though. Like I said, like I remember I was telling you earlier, like this this is one of the first days where I just like haven't had anything to do. Like I haven't had stone cold nothing to do in a few months. So I, I just like took today to sleep in and then eat a lot and then sleep some more. So I mean I'm I am i am going into this on a good amount of sleep. <sighs> How you doing over at work by the way? I guess you said you were just uh, editing a paper. How's the editing going?
So if I go Swamp Thoughtseize, I don't have the option of playing Renin Six on turn two. That might be okay because like, even if I don't Renin Six, I still have a uh, turn two play in Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I gotta slap myself out of the headspace. I've got some cold water that I can put on myself. Ooh, they mulliganed. Let's hide this chat. Yeah, I think I'm cooling off. I I, I would have definitely been more upset like had we lost the match. So again, I know we can't cast Ren, Ren and Tanks on turn on turn two now, but we have another turn two play, so it's not tragic. Oh boy, it's Bluetron, but Bluetron with stuff that's good against us. All right, so we can Colgon's command, the Tome. Not worried about spatial contortion. To be completely honest, I don't think long run, long run we can beat this worm coil. I think we can beat the Karn, we can shatter the Maze Mind Tome. I don't think we can beat this Worm Coil. Opponent's hand's not great either. That's a Kling. Kling is a redraw. I think we should be getting our pressure down now. Um, I'm assuming this is stomping ground here. It doesn't give us second black, but we've got mostly green spells. It's not blood crypt. It's between stomping ground and overgrown tomb. I think I want the option to Colgon's command next turn, so that would mean stomping ground. Goyf is already quite large. Drew a power plant, rough. There's the tome. Bolt isn't great. So I'll attack. And then I guess I'll cling to dust, like my own thought sees after I attack. I guess it doesn't actually change anything. Like, what, what this would do is if I draw fetch land, I can cast Ren and Six this turn. Otherwise, I'm just playing Ravine and passing. Um, Blue Tron is still bad for us, but it's less bad than Green Tron. So let's eat this Thought Seize. I'm going to want to keep the land for the Ren and Six. Bloodbraid's not bad. To note, I may have missed a point of damage by just not bolting them before damage because I didn't yet have instant in the yard. We could have had them at uh, 12 right now. Could matter. Yeah, the, the key difference, I think, between uh, Mono Green Tron and Mono Blue Tron is that Blue Tron tends to not care about getting Tron on turn three. They they play some them, some counter spells like Condescend um, that involve having their blue early. Bolt doesn't really have a much better use. Let's just throw it upstairs. If I draw untapped land, I think I'm blood braiding here. I really need to apply max pressure. All right, well that's not untapped lands, but it is a land, so I guess I can Colagon's command like in response to a tome activation. So, all right, let's just wait and see what they do. Like they also play like one or two Cyclonic Rifts, so they could just like unsummon this in theory. So if I Colagon's command to shatter the tome and two damage to you, they'll be at seven, which means Goyf plus a hit from Bloodbraid is lethal. I mean, that's assuming they don't have anything, but I think it's what we're going for. I mean, it's still just a generically good play. 
So two damage to any target. So destroy your artifact, two damage to any target. So this is the artifact, you are the target. So ideally they don't complete the Tron and then play something like Ugin. There are four cards we don't yet know about. I mean if they complete the Tron they can just Karn and then get something that costs four or less to play immediately. They do complete it. Don't know what they get that costs four or less. Maybe they hope that Worm Coil is good enough. They're just getting Bridge now. Bridge doesn't actually do it though. Goyf is a 4-5. So I think we're taking this game. Oh, they just cast a 0. Make Goyf smaller. Or make their hand smaller, rather. So I mean Renin 6 gets to kill the Karn, but it's unlikely to be able to attack again. I guess we just see what we cascade into. This one can attack. Well I don't want to cast that because I want it to be able to attack. Yep, they have three cards, Goyf does nothing. We know about Spatial Contortion. Oof, that gets back Worm Coil. I mean, they've got three cards still. They could very easily have a counter spell. Looks like Moto's a little laggy. I mean, if they have any counter spell and they remove the card from their hand, then we do just kind of die. Ooh. Um. I guess two to you, kill an artifact. Doubt this works. Any counter spell still blows this out. Yeah, condescend for two works. So now they get back Worm Coil and they play Worm Coil and we lose. I won't even waste their time. Alright, Bluetron. Um, Spellbomb is a good redraw, and also they just play stuff like the Academy Ruins that we just lost to. Pillage is also going to be good. Alpine Moon stops Tron. Brutality gets through all their counter spells. Ashiok makes sure. We, we've got a lot of really good tools versus them. Uh, bolts don't do a whole lot of anything. Uh, neither do the Fatal Pushes. Cling the Dust actually has some utility. Don't think I want five hand disruption spells. Um, Terminate doesn't do a whole lot. Ooze is on the slow side, but it can mess with their graveyard. We have a lot of other stuff that messes with the graveyard. Think I'm gonna trim a brutality. And two more. I don't like taking out Goy if it's our best clock. Liliana is quite strong. Iron Insect doesn't actually kill anything. It's just good for getting the lands back. Maybe we take out like a cling.
Yep. This is a hand. Pretty minor, but I'll leave a land in the deck for another turn. Make it more likely we draw it. Ideally a black one. Let's hit black leaf cliffs. This Ashiok could be pretty strong versus the blue variant. Relic. Well, that'll be good versus Goyf, so maybe I just play the Dark Confidant. Liliana's good. I think I really, really want to hit these land drops now. So I'll play the Bob. Let me pop this out. Yep. Exile. Yep. Okay. Untapped black source would be huge. All the black sources are untapped. Yeah, see, James, this is what I was talking about. Like, their their main concern isn't necessarily brutal. Their main concern isn't really um, assembling Tron. That's kind of just, like, how they win at some point. Untapped land, please. Please. Well, I doesn't even get anything back. All right, now they can get now they now they can start getting their Tron. On top land would still be great. Nope. Yeah, they just relic themselves, take out both types. Kind of a bad beat. It'd be that way though. I mean, since Goyf is so bad, maybe I just get Thrun and Six in now and start plussing while their counter magic is down. I mean, Relic kind of fights the ultimate too, which is, I guess, the way this would be impactful in the long run. But I mean, I should at least start plussing, I think. Goyf Goyfs don't do anything, so. At least I'll get the card that needs time down. Alright, there it is. Just in time for their counters to do stuff. <laughs> Which one do I go for? It's kind of close, to be honest. Like, I want to start working on their hand, but I also want to stop stuff like maps. But, I mean, they get to pop this map in response, or they can just counter the, uh, the Ashiok. I mean, if they're countering the Ashiok, they're not popping map, and they have to do it on next turn. It's close. I mean, also, if I do nothing, like, they just draw a card with Tome or pop map. It's kind of a coin flip, I think. I think I'm edging towards Liliana just because Ashiok doesn't actually stop this map anyway. And the longer Liliana's in play, the better she is. Yep. Attack for one, I guess. One, because I'm assuming they're going to exile something with Relic. Alright, so next turn they'll, they'll get the Tron online. <laughs> Another Liliana. I mean, there's a world where they just don't have a payoff, right? They've got a lot of looks at it though, between popping relic and just another maze mind tome.
All right, well, it's stuck. If they pop the relic after damage, I can run in, I can Ashiok targeting myself and then maybe buy a land back with the Renin Six. Yeah, also like two damage just like hardly means anything. Yeah. So do I even activate Ashiok at all? I guess I will because then that, then I might make him want to pop the relic when I try to buy a land back. Like if I do this before combat, I think they just easily pop the relic and then they take nothing. <laughs> they just don't care so much they let it happen. All right, play a thicky. Ugin. Yeah, that's a thicky. Minus three. I guess you get minus two. I mean, if I draw a burn spell, I can kill the Ugin, kill the tome. If I don't, I'm just, I'm just very dead. But if I don't draw a burn spell, I'll, I'll, I'll concede. Or a blood breed. All right, I'm very dead to this Ugin. All right, there goes the trophy dream, but we still have the 4-1 dream. Yeah, I feel like Blue, Blue Tron is, is a better matchup than Green Tron, but uh, still not enjoyable. We had we had a, uh, a chance to win game one. The opponent just needed to, to, to naturally draw um, their third Tron piece within three cards, and they hit it. Yeah, I did get my play points back. And even better than that, like you if you go 3-2, you get your points back and you get a treasure chest, which uh, equates to about two and a half tickets. Oh wow, we just had a surge of people come in, welcome. Come on, four one. It's a fish. Pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that's what they intended it to mean. Sounds fine. Keeper and they mulliganed. I haven't played against a Scalding Tar in all league. This can mean Team or Urza, I guess most commonly. Not Urza, um, Uro. Maybe it's Stoneblade though. Yeah, it looks like it could be Stoneblade. This, this will be fun. Our hand's set up pretty okay versus Stoneblade. That land makes this play easier. Yeah, it's just honest to God stone blade. I mean, I guess I'm gonna take spell snare here because I would really like this red and six to resolve and it, it'll force them into a two for one. Interesting that they're casting the serum visions before the polluted delta sacrifice. Just take the just one of the redraw, I guess. I uh, I guess uh that makes some sense. They put top top. 
All right, well, that land is going to combo with the Ren and Six, but I'm assuming it's getting forced. However, if they force the Ren and Six, they're not forcing this Liliana. So I think I'm okay with that. Like, I can Inquisition first to make sure they both get through, but I'd rather just get the two-for-one now. So I've got Overgrown Tomb. This will be Stomping Ground. Unless I want multiple black, if there's ever a turn where I want to, like, play Liliana and Inquisition, if I want to get Goyf down now. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to Liliana next turn no matter what, though. So let's just Stomping Ground. Yeah, Stomping Ground, running six. And then I'm assuming you've drawn a blue card to force this with. Jace the Mind Sculptor, yep. So I know about a path, and you've got one other. Opponent with a Path to Exile is a pretty good, a pretty good time to play a Liliana. As long as the one card I don't know about is like another counter spell. Oh well, now we have backup, so that makes this much easier. So let's just hope their last card isn't another force or like a logic knot or something. All right, it's a logic knot. And we've got the backup. All right, I guess please don't have another one. Cool. Let's ditch a black leaf cliffs and play a raging ravine. <laughs> there goes terminus. So I guess they could be playing the uh, counterbalance deck. This should be a fun match. Don't know if it's favored or disfavored, but it should be fun. All right, so now I can discard uh, Inquisition. They have no cards in their hand. Then Goyf will be large. And then if they have something like Baby to Fairy, I can decay it. It'll still be it'll still be annoying. Gonna have to be careful that I don't um, plus the Liliana with an empty hand because I don't want them to cryptic me and then make me discard a Liliana. That's actually a pretty good draw. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plus, and then I will discard the Decay and then I'll activate Ravine. Ooh, Snapcaster's good. Might be one of their better draws. All right, so that's gonna resolve. All right, so now I've got a choice. I can discard the Blood Crypt, decay the Snapcaster. Um, my Goyf isn't gonna live for very long as they're gonna path it, but then I'll have a Liliana on six. The other thing that I could do is I could discard the Decay, shock the Blood Crypt, attack with Raging Ravine. But then they have a Snapcaster to pressure Liliana. So what I, well the, the, decision, the decision is do I want them, do I want to have a, a Raging Ravine and a Liliana and they have a Snapcaster or are they just going to have... Or, or is the board going to be empty with the Liliana on six and I don't have a Raging Ravine activated? I'm more likely to draw a land, so I think what I want to happen is make sure this Liliana stays high. So I think that means I am going to Abrupt Decay the Snapcaster and discard Blood Crypts. Snapcaster was really, really good for them. Oh yeah, and here I here I get the land right away. Um, I guess I'm gonna want ooze mana if I draw ooze. I've already got double black and lots of red. 
I mean, this is a favorable position. All right, so I'm gonna make sure to plus plus Liliana with the card in my hand. I could just use it as double Stone Rain. Yeah, let's double Stone Rain, I think. You know what? No. I want this Liliana to stick around after the ultimate. And I have pressure in the Raging Ravine. Yeah, so now, now I can just activate Ravine. And next turn I can ultimate, unless they like draw Cryptic again. I think I think this is best. Not by a lot. But like the upside of having Liliana in play after a double stone rain, yeah, this is gonna be good. So if they want their colors, they're going to have to go on fewer lands. Alright, and they do want their colors. So this will be one off of lethal next turn. But they also just like can't cast anything. And they can't really path my Raging Ravine either because I'm going to plus before combat. Doesn't matter what I draw. <laughs> Discards Terminus again, sure. Alright, so now they won't even be able to fetch. This is the second game that a Raging Ravine has uh, gone the full distance. <laughs> Shark Typhoon for zero. Yep. We win. All right, so this looks like just blue white control with the Shark Typhoon finish. So let's play Collective Brutality. Let's play Ashiok. Let's play Clothis. And probably Nile Spellbomb. Uh, Lightning Bolt isn't really doing a whole lot. Fatal Push is doing even less. I like the Clings. I love the Bob. Terminate not doing a whole lot. A lot of their removal is uh, exile based, so Colagon's Command doesn't actually buy stuff back super often, right? I think I want the Decay for stuff like Baby Teferi. Um, and then since it is such a value and uh, a value centric game, I think I like trimming Tarmoglyphs, especially because their primary removal is Sweeper and Path to Exile based. Don't think it's going to come down to a damage race super often. Just like cut another one. If I cut another one, I am worried about my capacity to actually close the game, so I don't think I'll cut all of them. I think I'll cut an Inquisition, because I am playing three more brutalities with the idea of having a similar function. Yeah, I don't want I don't I don't think I want too much of the same effect. Sounds fine. Yep. Also, like taking out Glyphs could be good as a good as a hedge versus rest in peace, but the opponent did take out or sorry, is playing logic knot.
So I'm not maybe they're not playing rest in peace. Ooh, that's a good one. I think can definitely win a game. I've got Mountain in my hand, so that makes the Verdant the better fetch over Bloodstained Mire, so I'll use that one for Overgrown Tomb to cast Scavenging Ooze. Definitely want to fetch as few basics as possible versus the Path to Exile, probably Field of Ruin deck. Ooze will do a good job at controlling the Search for Escanta's ability to flip. We've also got Spell Bomb to protect from that. That's good. Alright, no baby to fairy. That's good. Pretty sure I should just lead with an attack. Haven't been drawing super hot. I think I just try to slam a uh, Liliana into this. I've got a backup one and I'm not doing anything else. I don't imagine this sticks, but it'll be good if I do. Whoa, we hit a burst of viewers. How's it going everyone? I guess, not, I guess not a lot of people are streaming at this hour. We are currently 3-1 and one in this league, and we are up a game in match 5. Counter spell. Yep, makes sense to me. Go. I could spell bomb them, but I'm pretty sure I want to just get the card out of this spell bomb. Alright, and this is their cryptic turn. Another land, not great. I guess I'll just take this opportunity to get a ravine down. So they don't have Archmage's Charm in their hand, but it is on top. So this might be the last good window to get a Liliana in. I refuse to believe that. Let's just pass, hold up a green. It was like if I if I play Liliana and it gets like cryptic bounced, like I just can never come back, because then I know they have Archmage's Charm and like an active search for his Kanta. Wow, they're not playing lands? Let's keep the Ascanta small. So now they have Archmage's Charm. That can clear the way and maybe get a Liliana through. Either way, I'm attacking first. The most threatening grizzly bear you've ever seen. So I guess I should Brutality first to take an instant or sorcery and then that can inform my decision on if I want to uh, tap out for the Liliana. I know at a minimum they have Archmage's Charm. Ooh, my hair is doing a thing. Counter a spell. Alright, well now if they're going to counter Liliana it's got to be Force of Negation. I've got my mountain in play already, so Verdant is a better fetch land for getting basics, so that means I'm going to want to use Bloodstained Mire. I mean, if they force Liliana, I feel okay. Because then they've got four lands, a search, and one card. Like, as long as that last, last card is in Jace the Mind Sculptor, I think I'm in a good spot. Overgrown Tomb. 
Yes. So hopefully they don't have, I was going to say, hopefully they don't have blue card, Jace, and a Force. And then going to discard the non-Raging Ravine land here. Ooh, that eats a Cryptic? Good deal. Just traded a Cryptic for a land. Has me scared what the rest of their hand could be, though. Like, I'm, I'm still afraid of a Jace. I can attack the Jace with a Ravine, though. Gonna be sure to be careful to not plus the Liliana with an empty hand. That's that's good. I won't be able to attack with the Ravine, though. Probably, probably still safe. The issue is, uh, it, it kind of forces me into popping spell bomb, but that's okay at this point, right? I'll just have you reveal your hand to choose something to discard. I think this is good. Draw a card. Oh, that's going to be good versus me. I do have spell bomb to take care of the first copy. Do it again. I could turn this into a draw one, but then they have frantic inventory in the yard for the next one to be a draw two, so I don't think it actually does much. Yeah, I think I'd rather just get both of these. Wow, I bricked. Alright, so let's plus this. Then pop spell bomb. So there goes flooded strand. I can then sack the spell bomb, prevent the search from flipping. Say yes to this. And <laughs> just like play another one, I suppose. Your turn. This Jace isn't unbeatable given the Raging Ravines in play. Snapcaster isn't good here. Mystic Sanctuary isn't good here. I mean, I don't think I'm ahead, but I don't think I'm that far behind. The The nightmare scenario, I guess, is if a Jace brainstorm and hit a path to exile, and then my Ravine can't connect. Looks like that's the play. We've seen one path to exile already. So they're drawing to what I'm assuming is three more copies. Alright, well they're tapping out for a Sand Vision, so that means the Ravine's going to get to kill the Jace. They went bottom bottom with the Scry, that's promising. <laughs> Cling. It's actually not bad here. So if I, I, I need to have four to activate the ravine, that leaves me with two mana to actually cast stuff with. So I mean if this hits um, something like uh, an Inquisition or a Thoughtseize, I'll be able to cast it. Otherwise I'll just discard it like any other card. Pulse. I think I should still just use the the Jace to uh the, the the ravine to kill the Jace. Puts a counter on it. Um I mean I, I could I, I definitely want to keep plussing this because next turn it's within ultimate range. So it's kinda like how do I want to deal with the Jace? I mean I, either way is gonna leave me without cards in hand, but this way I'll have a, a counter on a ravine. So I'll just plus. Um, let's uh, tap a one for red and then activate this one. 
And then I'll make sure to leave it black for the spell bomb. So this is this is going well. They've got a Snapcaster in play, but I've got Spellbomb to make sure that's not great. Got a Liliana about to ultimate. I've got a Cling to Dust as some extra cards at some point. I think I'm slightly ahead. And that's not sarcasm. I think it is slight. This doesn't target anything. Not entirely sure what this accomplishes. Sure. Oh, they're, oh, they're, they're just playing their hand out in case I decide to uh, ultimate. Do I want to pop the spell bomb? Don't think so. I think I want to get all their permanents after the ultimate. Get all the permanents exiled, I mean. Ooh, Liliana's a strong follow-up. All right, let's let's ultimate. That seems good. All right, so let's put their colors apart from their other lands. Um, let's like, how does this these piles look? These piles look really really good. I could I could do this. This probably heavily entices them to keep this though, and the search for Visconta could be good. I think I want to do this. Although I think Snapcaster is the worst creature, so maybe I put Snapcaster over here. I should probably just be splitting their lands three and three. Although I wanna, I wanna entice them to keep creatures as I have backup Liliana. I mean, this means if they draw cryptic, cryptic could be good. So I think I shouldn't. I think I think I should be splitting it unevenly. Like maybe this. Yeah, this looks good. It was like Jace is their better creature. If they keep this pile, I can Liliana Edict the Snapcaster, left with only blue mana and a search. But the search isn't flipping anytime soon because I have Spell Bomb. Then I can just continue smacking them with a the ravine. This seems good. Man, I love Liliana. Whew. What a card. Ultimating is like the most fun thing. Alright, they kept the Snapcaster pile, as predicted. Alright, so I'm pretty sure... I could just attack with Ravine here too. I definitely want to pop Spellbomb, because otherwise their search is going to flip, so I should just start there. Unless I want the Snapcaster to also be exiled. I'll, I'll just do this first. Let's pay a black. Say yes. Lightning Bolt. Do I just bolt this thing now and get it under the, get it under the rug? Yeah, let's do it. Bolt, yeah. And then I'll still activate Ravine. Get rid of all your stuff. Activate the larger ravine because it hits for more, obviously. Alright, so the opponent gets to surveil at every upkeep. But they have only three lands in play to work with. I think this is a pretty good spot. Now I think we're solidly ahead, fair to say. They have to ditch their other color. Well, Field of Ruin does hit r the Ravine that attacks. So I guess I'll just activate the smaller one now. They both they both kill in two turns, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. Mm -hmm. 
Now I get to play Liliana 2, because this land comes in untapped. Solid. Alright, so now I'm hoping they don't find Path to Exile, Celestial Purge. This is my last threat. But uh, things like Path and Celestial Purge won't actually do it. Um, because Liliana will make them discard it. And again, making sure not to discard a card with a... Uh, making sure not to discard a card without a card in hand. Because if, if they have Cryptic, they can like bounce with Liliana or the Ravine and force me to discard it. We did it! Sick. Yeah, this matchup's fun. Alright, so we got a 4-1. So for those who are just tuning in, unfortunately I'm about to log off, but I do have a, uh, a deck wrap-up that I want to do because uh, this is a recording that is going to go on my YouTube. So if this league looks, looked at all interesting to you and you want to see the matches that passed, you can look them up over on my YouTube. Um, I'll put my YouTube name over on a sticky note because I have not yet advertised it on my Twitch account. Let me do that real quick. I don't know why it has to load sticky notes. Alright, so here is the YouTube account name. Uh, it's just my name. Not too fancy. Um, another way to find it would be, um, you could in the search bar search for Jund League, Modern Jund League number and then like a number 1 through 16. Um, you could also search Junderdome. Any of those things should narrow it down to where you eventually find my channel. On my channel, you will find um, this is the 16th uh, league that I'm going to be uploading. So uh, if you like content like this, um, there's already a whole bunch of it on my YouTube channel. Feel free to uh, pop on over there, um, watch some videos, like, subscribe, all that other YouTuber shenanigans. That's my uh, shameless plug. So uh, with that out of the way, I'll leave this here. With that out of the way, um, I'll do my my deck tech wrap up and uh, get the recording finished off. So uh, this was a pretty successful league, all things considered. Um, it's a, it's a very very stock shell, but the experimental card is this this cling to dust thing over here. Um, it, it's been pretty impressive. The fail rate on it has been one mana draw card, and then the, the roof on it has been absolutely absurd. Um, you can like exile the Uros that you would otherwise just lose on the spot to. You can exile Snapcaster targets. Uh, you can exile um, Mystic Sanctuary targets, all of that stuff. So it's just been really, really impressive. And then like late game, it almost came up in the game that just finished up, but we ended up just being so ahead it didn't matter. You can exile crap from a yard to just draw extra cards with it. Because it's not actually a card in your hand, but you can, you can pay for Exile 5 and then boom, now you have a card in your hand. So that was pretty impressive. Um, that one Bob actually did surprisingly well. Um, so I was happy there, especially since it's my pet card. Um, as far as the two uh, flex spot um, removal spells, I was very happy with the Terminate. I know Reed Duke on a, on a recent article said that his current suggested list involves two Terminate, no Abrupt Decay, no Assassin's Trophy. Um, pretty sure that's just a meta call as he also identified. Um, but the Terminate was very good. Um, I never once had something I wanted to kill with like a Trophy or Decay and like I had the Terminate in my hand instead. Um, same was true for the Abrupt Decay. So I don't know, maybe maybe the Duke is onto something and Terminate is just the best thing to do right now as far as the two mana slot goes. The Decay was nice. I think two Cola Guns commands is still probably right. Um, I could see upping it, but I don't really see going below two. Two has been great. Liliana was absolutely absurd this league. Phenomenal card. Um, Bloodbraid still the just best generic curve topper you can get. Um, Bloodbraid came in big. Um, two for one with haste um, versus multiple shadow opponents, even just this league. 
Also really great um, to, uh, to cast into an opponent with open blue mana. So pretty sweet there. Um, the Ooze is also fantastic. Um, they did a big job keeping down that search for Escanta that we just fought. And uh, they, also, they also grew pretty large in some of the previous matches. I think six one mana removal spells is still where we want to be, especially in a world with so much shadow and uh, prowess decks. And I think six one mana hand disruption spells is also still where we, still where we want to be. Um, as far as the sideboard is concerned, I was again pretty happy with it. There was one scenario against the Eldrazi and Taxes player in round three where we kind of bricked on the duress mode, but we were really just looking for a path to exile in that specific scenario because we needed our Glyph to continue being good. Um, so, I mean, other than the one brick, it felt pretty good. The Plague Engineer was also insane. Um, the Ashiox did not super well this league, but we honestly didn't fight against anything where it, where it would have been insane. Like, we didn't really see any Uro piles, but we did, we did see a couple Stone Blade decks and a few Shadow decks, but I didn't bring it in against Shadow. Um, we did not we did not see the Clothis um, throughout this league, but I imagine it would have been good um, had we seen it. And I think the two matches that we brought it in, we brought it in net just now versus Blue White. And uh, I don't think we brought it in versus Eldrazi attacks because we didn't bring it in versus Shadow. So maybe we did just bring it in the one time. But had we seen it, I imagine it would have been good. Um, our loss to Mono Blue Tron, we did not see any of our uh, of our um, land hate. However, um, had we seen it, I'm not sure we were winning anyway. Um, I still think Alpine Moon is probably better than Damping Sphere, um, just because it also has the side effect of turning off Field of the Dead versus all the Uro shenanigans, and also it doesn't make your Cascade spells cost one more if you've got the Damping Sphere in play and you've cast two spells. You have Blood Braid and then you cast whatever you Cascade into. Very, very happy with the three Nile spell bombs. Um, never felt clunky. Multiple games, I drew multiple of them, and I needed multiple of them, so that was pretty good. Um, it might say something that I needed multiple. Maybe, like, the first one, for example, wasn't good enough. But, I mean, even if it wasn't good enough, it still provided... Like, even if it wasn't good enough as just a, a, a standalone spell bomb, it was still very good, provided value, and cantripped. So I mean anything that anything that provides some amount of meaningful value while not going down on cards at all is 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 pretty pretty exciting. So I, I think I like um, the, the triple Nile spell bomb. So all in all, very very satisfied with the list. Had a lot of fun with it. Felt super super smooth. Um, I know um, a couple leagues ago, I think in league number fifteen. We played more of the uh, mid-rangey Uro piles, and then this league we got some more of the uh, combo slash Tron slash Shadow stuff. So we've gotten a pretty decent sample size up to now. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting a comment in chat saying, just remember what Bolt does, yeah. In match three, I made a pretty pretty, pretty silly mistake of checking for lethal, checking for lethal, crap, can't kill them. And then as soon as I lose, I was like, wait, I could have just bolted them there at three. So I felt pretty stupid after that. But uh, we still got the match because the deck's great, and uh, yeah, um, Jun, Jun feels like it's in a pretty sweet spot right now. Like obviously, there's stuff you want to dodge. You want to dodge Tron. Ideally, you want to dodge Eldrazi Tron too. But we even we beat Eldrazi Tron round one, so that was that was pretty sweet. But all in all, um, solid deck. Um, I really like this list. This is what I would probably play with if I brought it. If I, if I were going to a uh, like a big event tomorrow, obviously no one is because of coronavirus, but uh, if I were going to a big event, I think this is the list I would submit. I'd put money on it. Um, yeah, so that's going to be it for, for this recording. Uh, if you like content like this and you want to see some more, head on over to my YouTube channel. This is, uh, this is the name you can use to search said channel. You can also search things like Jun Modern League Number and it'll probably pop up. I can't imagine there are many videos with that name. Um, so yeah, there are already, there are already lots and lots of videos, 17 to be exact, 18 after this one, because I, I did a Jun Shadow League once, um, 18 of those videos already exist on my YouTube, so if you'd like to see more stuff like this, I suggest going over there strongly, um, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscription, um, I would greatly appreciate and look forward to interacting with all my viewers, because I really, really like playing Jun, and I really like, uh, discussing, uh, all the theory behind what makes the deck tick. So I think that's enough of me rambling. Uh, oh, one more thing. If you're watching this video on the YouTube and you want to catch my um, recording sessions live, you can do so on Twitch at Junderdome. 
Um, it's J-U-N-D-E-R-D-O-M-E. -E, and the link for that will be in the description of the video that you are currently watching. With that said, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you have a good one.